when I was younger living in Waikiki, my mom, me, my mom, and my brother, we shared one bed and the rest of the house she rented out. We must have had like six roommates and they were pedicab drivers and pizza delivery guys and every that was like kind of like a party house. And um, I remember them all drinking beer and riding pedicabs, but in my eyes at that age, it was just, you know, one big party and everything was fun and everybody got along. In that house, I got molested when I was six. I don't really remember much about being really depressed or angry about it. I just remember it as happening and kind of moving on. My mom tells me back in those days, she used to do cocaine and smoke weed. I had no idea. She said that she also cried out to the Lord. I guess she was looking around and wasn't satisfied with that type of life. I was cutting school in fourth grade. I was never liked, I wasn't smart. I wasn't popular, my mom didn't have a lot of money so I didn't have cool clothes or, you know, my nationalities, African American mix, did not really fit in in the Asian local culture that I was raised around. I wasn't considered pretty, I thought I was ugly. Just smoked weed and cut school and started doing inhalants, rubber cement, butane. This is about age, this is fifth grade, sixth grade. So I'm like 10 and 13. I was doing rubber cement and butane on a daily basis. I remember doing that for like, I don't know, 15, 16 to about 16. I started getting locked up for truancy, curfew. Amongst my friends, I was this major, major druggie who had access to all these things, but my mom still thought I was just this sweet, innocent girl that she loved and that could take care of herself, I guess. And I guess that just wasn't the case because of my personality. I was swayed to the dark side of the world and I just went, I went full force. I was got introduced to crystal methamphetamine at 15 and acid and dark music. And I just, st I remember being so thin and uh, throwing up bile because I would smoke crystal meth and not eat for like a week at a time. And I was like, must've been like 105 pounds. And I lived at home. My mom, I remember I must've like missed like two weeks of school and, and the I think the counselor called her or something and she, I forget, I must have lied. I said something like I was experiencing troubles in school. So she took me to a shrink and I was allowed to stay home or something. But I just remember thinking in my head, she can't even tell that I'm just on drugs. That was, that was really all that was wrong with me. I was just a drug addict. I wouldn't understand why I had this desire to be so bad sometimes. And it used to make me depressed. I used to go through a lot of depression because I didn't understand why I wanted to be the way I wanted to, why couldn't I just be this good girl and go to school and, you know, make my mom proud and just be normal. I just, I always felt that that wasn't for me. And when I used to really sit and think about it, it made me feel suicidal because I wouldn't understand what was wrong with me. But for some reason, I had a part of me that just wanted to run and be high and never be sober. I hated to be sober. I loved being high. I loved listening to music and being gone and just being. At 18, you know, I'm an adult considered, I'm considered an adult That's when I first went to prison, as soon as I made 18 and I did a year and it was just, you know, it was just another chapter in my life. If anything, I felt like I graduated to, you know, big girls kind of thing. Started getting involved in homosexuality and um, because in prison 80% of the popula population is, is gay or turns gay or something and um, separated from men and you do years and years and that's what you do. There were times in prison when I would read my Bible or I would try to go to church, take classes and um, my homosexuality would stop me from really being fully involved because I felt guilty. I knew it was wrong. I'd be in a serious relationship with a woman and it doesn't mix, you know? I was really, I was always really a genuine person. I was either gonna be really bad or I was gonna be really good. I didn't like to try to do good and bring the bad stuff along and, you know, fake it, so you could say. I remember getting jumped into gangs I didn't even want to be in, you know, like 
taking beatings in the showers and s sitting there having to punch some girl I, I didn't even know in the face 20 times, doing it back and forth to each other, just stupid initiation things. I'd look at other people that were around me and locked up and they had been abused growing up or, you know, something more dramatic than me and they should be where we're at. But here I was with a good mom who loved me and supported me and I was still screwing up. So I just didn't understand that. I now know why I went through everything that I went through. I, I know it was to help other people and to minister to other women. And my whole life now is totally about the Lord. And as much as I was in my sin, as high as I was 24 hours, is as much as I am for Christ. I mean, I love Christ more than I love my husband. I love the Lord more than I love my children. And in that, he has taught me how to love myself. And in that, he has showed me how to love my husband and showed me how to love my daughter. It's the best thing that ever happened to me in my life. I feel worthy to be a mother and a wife. He has showed me how to live and to be a new person. He has healed all my wounds and my scars. With Christ, all things are new, and he has made me a new creation. He has taken my beauty for ashes. He has taken what the devil caused for harm, everything that Satan tried to use to kill me. Relationships, self-mutilation, depression, um, drugs, all those things are tactics of Satan to kill you and destroy you. God has transformed and renewed and cleaned and filled and changed me and for his glory and for his kingdom and to help other people that are lost. My name is Nicole and it means victory. And victory, the scripture that goes with that is he brought my people out of the wilderness and leads them into victory. And I, and I receive that. I receive that prophecy so much. And that is my life. My life is to bring those people that have struggled in darkness of homosexuality and self-mutilation and prison and institution, being institutionalized and, and bring them out and see the victory in Christ and in the freedom in Christ and the glory of the Lord and the love that comes from Jesus and the fruits of the Spirit, which is peace, joy, love, hope, and faith. Money cannot replace those things. Anything you have cannot take the place of those things. When you have those things, everything else is downhill. God grants those to us, his, his believers and his children. And I just want to do whatever he wants me to do.